Hello, good morning, everyone. Okay. Yeah, I think it's better okay. now. I think it's better now. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Um, my name is um, I would by my name, and um, I work with or I work for Ensapol Veterinary Services. Um, we are presently in Ibadan, though we have. Um, I want to appreciate Edmund for giving us this opportunity to come on board to discuss what we have done in the last four years with everyone who is interested. Okay. Um, just give me some few minutes. It looks as if I can hear some sounds on the background. So that we can fix this and have it each free training. Just give me some few seconds, please. Hello, is it better now? Hello, is it better? Can we hear me loud and clear? Yes, yes, yes. I think it's better, better now. Uh, okay. Um, so, modern technology in poultry production in Nigeria. And um, we're going to be looking at what we have done in the last few years to be able to maximize optimize, optimize production and also maximize profit in the country. Um, What we discovered is this production in Nigeria. And usually when we meet farmers or investors or people who are interested to do this, Yeah, apology for that. Um, I think uh, he's trying to fix um, to have a better network and so that he will be able to commence the training proper. Yeah. Dr. Aliba, are you still there? Sorry, let me try because he's not even available now. Uh, let me try to find out what is happening. Sorry about this. Uh, that may likely be his uh, network uh, causing that. Okay, so he's coming back.
You're welcome back, doctor. We lost you today. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're welcome back. Okay, um, can you give me the sharing right so that I can begin to share my screen now? Oh, okay. Let me do that. Okay, so you can share your screen now. Okay. The first thing I want us to look at is, it does it worth it for me to also discuss this morning? Does it really worth it for you to be in that industry as Nigeria stands presently today? We are going to be looking at, okay, there's a huge market for chicken. So I, I can call, I can say that chicken is actually an FMCG product in Nigeria, though coming directly from the farm. Almost every eatery in Nigeria, almost every party in Nigeria, almost every home in Nigeria, at least once, probably let me just say once in three months, we eat chicken. And some eat it every day. So almost every eatery, you see different names, either directly or indirectly, you find chicken in the name of eateries in Nigeria. So it's actually a, a major FMCG. And interestingly, we just have about 30 to 40% of this product being produced in the country. And the balance of it is being is being is being smuggled in from other countries. But I can tell you that at this trend is beginning to change. Government uh, all over the country, so it gives an impetus to the to this industry. So I can tell you that it's a growing concern. The business is large, and it's it's, it's, it's a growing concern in Nigeria. By FAO report, poultry subsector comes forth among the sources of animal proteins for human beings in Nigeria, consumption in Nigeria, which contributes about 27 to the national meat production. The present situation of the broiler business in Nigeria, all the broiler best produced by the major industry players in Nigeria is just about 10%, which is what I've, I've, I've discussed about before. Then approximately 1.2 beds. I'm just, this is just an approximate number. I just want us to play with the figures. I just want us to play with the numbers. Approximately 1.2 million birds are consumed yearly in Nigeria. And the question is, how do we get that figure? Our assumption is that 10% of 170 million Nigerians consume six packs of chicken a month, which is still a very conservative figure. A total of about 1.24 billion pieces of chicken will have been consumed in 12 months. From the retail perspective, the average price of chicken is 1,000, but we all know that chicken is more than 1,000 now. In Ibadan, it's about 1,300 from the wholesale. But when it gets to the retail market, you are looking at an average of 1,415,16. Some people even sell it in other price of Nigeria as high as 1,718. So we are just giving a, an approximate figure here that, okay, if each, uh, each old chicken goes for 1,000, so you are looking at 1,000, times the number of pieces, you are looking at an average of 1 trillion naira every year in, in the country. And I think that is a very large, that's a very, very large business that you can, you can, you can find your space in that, in, that, in that industry. From the retail perspective, the average price, which is the numbers we have just looked at, small good chicken products in Nigeria, most of the broiler chicken sold in our common market are small good, about 60 to 65 percent of the chicken we buy fall into this category. But the challenging for me, the challenging part for me is this: most of these chicken are not even healthy for the consumption of, of, of Nigerians because a lot of these um, these products have been formalized. They've been they've been preserved using formalin, and you can check online. This has been documented by different researches in different parts of the country.
So a lot of people now begin to know that for your health and for the safety of your family and yourself, you need to begin to purchase and patronize the Nigerian business, the Nigerian chicken. So I'm saying all this this morning so that you can know and appreciate the size of the business that we are talking about this morning. So, but for you to be able to thrive well in the business of, of poultry, and when we narrow it down to broiler business in the country, one of the challenges or one of the things I've noticed from investors to is that we really do not look critically at the risks. We really do not look at what are the risks or the critical control points or the critical limits or probably the critical success factors that will make me successful in this business. And what we are going to be looking at is our technology is tied to one of those risks. But I'm going to just quickly give us an overview of what the risk in poultry and in broiler business is. So despite the business and revenue potential, business, poultry business suffers in Nigeria, it has its own risk. And then despite the acknowledged nutritional economic importance of poultry products, it also comes with its own farming risk. And so these are the risks we are going to be looking at, and then we'll narrow down to one of the risks as we use product uh, technology to, to manage this risk. And what is risk? Risk is a probability that the desired and the expected result will not occur. It can also be defined as the deviation from the desired result. So what will make you not to have the desired result? Everyone has a key performance, um, a, a key, a, a key performance um, metrics or what you are looking at by the time, you, hello? By the time you are uh, rounding up your cycle or your production, there's, there's a focus in view. So if there's, what is the risk, the deviation, the probability, or the possibility that you're not going to achieve that? And what yeah, are yeah. the things that will not achieve yeah, your yeah. target goal? Those are the things we consider as the risk in broiler production. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say that. What are you we now have doing? been able to understand this risk from the small scale poultry farmers in Nigeria. So what this risk have been, have been profiled and we've seen that it is common to small scale farmers. Even if you are doing 10,000 beds in Nigeria, between 5,000 and 10,000 beds, you are still a small scale farmer. So a good number of our farmers are within this particular space all over the country. So this risk, uh, it pertains to every, technically, let me say 80% of farmers who are in the broiler or poultry space in the country. So quickly, we've been able to divide it into five risk uh, elements. Number one is structural and facility risk. The second is impute risk. The fifth one is human risk. Woman risk. So quickly glance through them. Structural and facility risk. You must understand what are the risk structures I'm using. Number one, the location of your pen. The location of your pen and the direction of your pen is very, very important. Um, farmland, sheep, and then you site your pen in the wrong location, or you site your pen in the wrong direction. The sighting, the rice. And I the like setting that. of the sun is very relationship between the sun. The rising and the setting of pen goes a long way to determine to what extent would the sun rise on your pen or set on your pen. The spacing of your pen out, what is your spacing? All this has to end and start with numbers. We must know how many beds are you, doing, are you going to put in your pen house. It has to come to the level of you measuring your pen. You have to know the total area of your pen. Yeah. And this will determine the amount, the total population of beds you can put in your pen. I have gone to farms where the word go. The farm best will work out. No matter your level of expertise. Yeah. 
the moment you back out your pen, your, your production is not going to be good. So it's also very important to have the right space. You have the right numbers and also in quality. Keep it risk. I won't want to dwell so much on some of this so that we can go to the major, the major discussion of the day. Input risk, um, this has to do with what is the risk associated with the input you are going to use. Mm. And the major issues that in quality, a lot of us overlook this answer. It shows that major, about 50% of the challenges emanate from this particular risk or chips. So everybody is naive or does it have the understanding of this risk in the industry? Anybody can call to say, oh, I need chicks. They can put chicks A in the carton of chicks B. Technology, we love to do there. I will ensure that you connect so that we can please let's all move our microphone. There yeah, are a lot of things around. Just try to click on the microphone so that it is muted so much. Can you give me access? Sure, you are going to have it now. So please, you can go ahead. You can share your screen now. Dr. You can share your screen now. Can you hear me? Can you give me access to share my screen, please? Uh, your network is long twenty. I don't know if you can hear me. Now you have the assets to share your screen. Sorry, I, I think it doesn't have a very good network. Uh, let's still try to wait. Because um, I think he has dropped off the call again. Uh, please, let's try to wait for him uh, while he connects and continues his uh, presentation. Uh, sorry about that. Please let's still wait for him. Uh, he's still trying to connect.
Hello. Hello. You're welcome back, Dr. Adebayo. Can you hear us? Please let's try to mute our microphone uh, while he tries to connect. Um. Dr. Ribaya, I'm in already. Oh, okay. Very good. Let me try to make it though so that I can share. Okay, let me just share my screen. I would like to share my screen. Yes, I, I want to make it that. That's what I'm trying to do. Hmm. Just one minute, please. Okay. Okay, you can share your screen now. So um, I was talking about production risk. I talked about um, initially before we went off, I was talking about the input risk that a good number of farmers make uh, mistakes at this particular stage. Garbage in, garbage out. The moment you get the wrong inputs in the name of chicks, drugs, or feed, you are likely not going to have the desired result. So no matter how much you put into a wrong into a wrong input, you are not likely going to have the best of the results. So, uh, input risk. The, 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 the fourth is the production risk. Production risk is are uh, the risks that are associated with key performance indicators of core production of broilers or poultry from chicks to adults. Either the chicks are meant to produce meat, or the chicks are meant to produce um, eggs. The risks that are here are quite high, and um, it has to do with what is your KPI, your key performance indicator. Are you looking at eggs, or you are looking at liability? For broilers, you'll be looking at mortality, your FCR, you'll be looking at liability, you'll be looking at um, your average weight. But for layers, you are going to be looking at the weight, and also what is your egg production, and also you'll be looking at uniformity. Production risk, generally anything that can make your animals or your birds to die quickly, we tag them production risk. And you see that most of the predisposing factors are poor quality manage, input quality and also poor management. Then we talk about marketing risk, the risk that you are not going to be able to sell your products. And someone might think that this is not a major risk. This is actually a major risk. In before you go into the business of poultry or broilers, you must understand the market. You must, you must, you must have market-driven production, not production that drives market. No, your, your production will be tied to market. You must have gotten your market and sustainable, consistent market before you go into production. Gone are those days where people produce and then they'll start looking for someone that will buy. The new way of doing business, especially in broiler business, is that you have discovered your market it is that it's consistent, that it's sustainable before you go into production. And then women's resource or skill set risk. A lot of us just feel, oh, poultry is just anything. Is it not just to get chicks, put them in a room and feed them? It's a business. It's more than that. The way an oil and gas engineer will focus on getting the right skill, the right engineer, the right consultant on his project is the same way an average farmer is also supposed to get the best and competent hands in the business that he's doing. For many of us, we are, we are distant farmers or away farmers. 
And then we also put people who are not so conversant with the business on our project. And this is one of the problems again. So we've been able to tie all this risk into five elements, like I said, input risk, um, production risk, equipment and facility risk, human resource risk and marketing risk. But uh, down to what we want, really want to talk about today is how we've been able to use our tech solution to manage poultry production risk. Poultry production risk is the major risk in your production, meaning from the day your chicks come on the farm to the day they will leave the farm. So any risk that is going to be involved, disease risk, managemental risk, how we have been able to use our tech solution to maximize or optimize production on the farm and also to uh, maximize profit. We call it the new poultry, um, poultry tech product, we call it BIM. And what has BIM been able to do for us in the last few years of our, of, our, of our existence as a company, we've been able to produce over 1 million uh, live chicken, live birds, and over 1.8 are of our operation as a veterinary consulting firm using our internal tool that we call BIM. Royal Business Intelligence Management. That is what we have in the last four years uh, to manage SHF farmers that work with us. And who are the what, what do I mean by SHF farmers? SHF farmers are small older farmers across um, southwest and some part of the north where we have engagement with farmers in the last four years. So the name of this tech product that we have been able to internally develop is BIM, Broiler Business Intelligence Management Tool. What does BIM focus on? BIM focuses on the key our daily weight gain. Average when weekly average weight gain, the farm mortality of the project, the liability, and also the feed, the efficient feed usage. On the beam, you can have access to all these in such a way that it gives you quick access, quick analysis, quick precision and predictive analysis of what is happening on your farm. Looking at all these particular metrics. And the question, the next question is why was beam developed? Why did we develop BIM? And we've also noticed that there are quite a lot of problems in the industry that emanate from this risk that we really don't look at, we don't focus on them. So, so the small other broiler farmers in South Nigeria account for more than 90% of the broiler farming in Nigeria. Those servicing as but the challenge is an average farmer, how much are they maximizing their business? How much are they getting out of it? Are they just busy or they are really in business? And we discovered that the mortality rate is high, the average weight is low. And that's one of the challenges that the first thing that comes to the mind of people, oh, I don't want to do poultry, the chicken will die. But I can tell you, we have been able to reduce our mortality to minimum average of about 3% in the last four years. So I can tell you confidently that over, over the last 48 months, the over 1 million birds that we have done, the average mortality we have records to prove is an average of 3%, meaning that in 100 birds, we only have like three, three birds that die. And how have we been able to achieve this? We've been able to achieve this by the use of this technological tool. Why BIM was developed? These poor performances, like we talked about, are due to insufficient knowledge and application of agricultural practices. In a recent survey conducted by Ensapop Services, it was discovered that a significant portion of farmers are eager to use precision monitor farm production 
validate the quality of we are decided to progressorize our beam, meaning that in such a way that it has helped us in the last four years, it can also help them. I've talked about this based on the research we did. 91.9% um, 90, indicated they were willing to pay for service that can help them improve the quality of our input. All these were the reasons why we developed beam. Farmers began to ask, how are you getting your results? Can you give us this particular product? So that is why we have decided that it is high time for us to, to productorize beam and bring it forward to farmers. Okay, um, just a quick description of the beam. Beam is our customized internally farm data reporting management tool. And what does it do? It collects and analyzes daily farm records. I'm going to repeat that again. It collects and analyzes daily farm records. Candy. Beam collects I'm live data on every data day. Time. That means oh, every day we collect oh, data from oh, all oh, the farms. Oh. Then we, we take them, we pass oh, them to oh, our and the beam does oh, the analysis oh. for us. It also gives us a key, quick overview of the farmer's performance and batch performance. Even if you are not on the farm, you are a business owner and you invest in dollar production or layer production, it can give you an overview of what is happening on your farm. For example, we have over 60 farms that we monitor. And by God's grace, we have over 150 farmers that have worked or are working with us presently. We cannot move around all these farms at the same time. You can't do that. Some farms are in Southwest, some are far in the Lagos, some are even far in Kwara, some are in Joss. How do we manage all these farms? How do we monitor them? How do we keep track on these farms? And that is one of the things Beam has been able to do for us. It gives us a quick overview of the farmers. For example, if you're an investor, you're a farmer, you're not always on the farm, or probably you're off and on. Beam gives you that solution to see what is on your farm live and, um, and direct. Let me use the word. Access to your farm online. So this strengthens the visibility and transparency of the broader production scheme to the entire stakeholders. What, what does BIM do? What does it do? The first thing that BIM does is it will collect live data from broiler farms, analyze it, generate predictive insights for the farmer, and this can be relied on to make informed production. Many a times, one of the challenges that farmers face is that they don't even know there's a problem until probably week four or week five. And broiler is such a compressed production, or poultry is such a compressed production that the moment you miss the first few days, or you, there are issues and you don't quickly collect them, you might not get to collect it again. So if for a venture, let me give an example, you're having challenges, seven day challenge, and then you just feel, oh, I'm going to get over it. And it's just a five weeks, the five weeks project, the five weeks cycle, the five weeks production cycle. And if you don't nip it at the board or you don't even know there's a problem, how do you want to fix it? So on your farm or if there are deviations, because what Be able to stand standards of feed, standards of mortality, standard of life. Sorry, uh, I think uh, I would just like to give us the information that um, we is going need to, to and, and we need sure to reconnect to with the same link that have been provided for us because we are actually out of time. So instead of having the break for five minutes, since he has not uh, concluded his um, presentation, we may reconnect immediately, but we we'll still give that five minutes for people that may not have good network, uh, so that we we'll wait a little bit for them. So what Beam does is that Beam has ability to collect live data from the farms, analyze it, and generate predictive insights for the farmer in such a way that before your problem starts, Beam sees it and begins to interpret for you. 
And that is for me, that is where the future of Agri is. Okay. Okay. Ability for you to yes. know there's going to be a problem yes. tomorrow and you start fixing it today. So it gives you a more of a predict, preventive approach rather than a control approach. And that is the beauty of BIM. Technology, the, the BIM technology gives you the, the access to, to correct or prevent issues before they happen on your farm because it's, it's about population medicine. The moment you see one bird die in your, in your flock due to a biological risk, I can tell you more than 10% of that flock is affected by that challenge or that disease. So what that is, is information. Like what I wrote here, I said, this can be relied on sounds in the background. Please, can we, nah, can we mute our mic? Can we the voice can't tell Shut up, please. We cannot hear you. Can we mute our mic, please? Thank you. This can be relied on to make informed production and technical, business, preventive, early corrective decisions to prevent production risk from crystallizing into market risk and financial risk. So this is a major thing that BIM does for farmers. And by God's grace, our BIM can take up to 500,000 beds per slot. Meaning that at once, if even if you have 500,000 dollars on your farm, you can design uh, your own BIM in such a way that a single farm can have, can have access to a slot of 500,000. And I'm sure few of us have up to 500,000 beds on our farm presently. Though we can replicate this as up, up to 1 million, 2 million beds. So features of BIM. BIM is our critical business software that collects information from various smallholder broiler farmers and common database, enabling the business managers, investors, and consultants to monitor the pulse of your broiler business from choosing a single vision of the world. Also, it also works like an enterprise resource platform. What are your critical business functions, your production data, your inventory, your order management, sales and marketing? So, so technically in the in the tech world, would you call something your, your life? Your live transaction processing is happening. Happy. Happy. Getting that data, that they, data goes. Sorry, to sorry, please. Can they admit? Uh, can they admit? Uh, admit everybody because somebody is talking from the background. A lady. Okay. okay, just just hold on. Mute everybody, please. Okay, I think we're fine now. So, those planning systems, it will unify your critical functions. And what are your critical functions on the farm? You're looking at your farm data, your inventory, the other management, the farm's communication, how do we link your production sheet with your calling sheet? All this we've been able to do on the BIM tech. So one major feature is that it has detailed analytics and reporting on each key performance indicators that is attached to your, to your, to your, to your, to your KPIs. Okay, BIM can generate major time production financial savings by providing broiler business um, insight. Meaning that before you start losing money, BIM can help you to know the loopholes. For example, if you have an attendant on your farm, who tells you that, oh, Oga, I'm feeding two bags in a day. And then by the time he inputs the figures of feeding those two bags consistently based on the um, description or the advice of BIM, now based on the population of the beds you have on your farm, your attendant is supposed to, is supposed to feed your best two, two bags. And this guy feeds less than 
two bags and probably keeps the rest of the food. The moment it does that for like few, three, two, three days, it's going to show in your weight, the expected weight. And as a good farm manager or a stockman or investor, you will definitely detect that, okay, if you are feeding the right feed, these birds are supposed to have the right weight. Bearing in mind that all things are equal. Another thing that it can do for you is that it also calculates the expected mortality per day in such a way that if you have 5,000 birds, it gives you what you are supposed to have as a mortality every day. And that gives you a quick predictive analysis, even if you are beginning to have more mortalities than that. Even if it's one or two, it's an indicator that there's a problem on your farm and you can quickly weigh it. Like I said, it also works as a ring management tool. It reduces and eliminates broiler production risk from crystallizing into financial risk. What is the innovativeness about our, our product? The innovativeness of BIM as a software as a service, that's the meaning of that SaaS. Software as a service is, it brings on board one-stop shop, which will capture your daily farm record, give you quick plans to the farmer in cases of deviations. Deviations in such a way that you are supposed to have this variance, this particular feed used in the first one week, you will be able to correct your attendance you are overfeeding these beds or you are underfeeding these beds. Or probably if the weights are not panning out, the seven you are supposed to have this particular weight. If there are deviations, you can quickly know, oh, I'm supposed to have this weight. Now this is the weight I'm having. What is the variance? How many feet am I going to need to meet up this weight so that I can have the right um, production target by week five? So this is what BIM does for you. Quick alerts to the farmer in case of deviations, improve optimization of inputs of production, and provide access to veterinary extension services, which we call the VRR. The VRR is such a way that the moment, if you have a vet or you are also probably bringing in us, you are bringing us in as your as a as your consultant, the VRR we call it the veterinary rapid response. It will help you to be able to quickly access a vet that you that you have been in business with or a new vet that we can bring on board for you. Then another innovation of um, innovativeness about BIM is our solution will be the first of its kind in Nigeria. And what do I mean by the first of its kind in Nigeria? Because of our experience in the last four years, 48 months, we've been able to work with different farmers. So we are bringing in a lot of experiences, challenges we have had with farmers across board from Jos, from Kaduna, Niger, Southwest, even as far as from part of South South. We've been able to gather this and we have been able to say, okay, this is the way we can solve this problem. We, nobody is going to solve the problem for us. And that is why NSAPO has gone ahead to, to bring out and liberalize BIM that we have been using for years to also help other farmers make profit and also sustain their production. So our solution is going to be the first kind of it, of it in Nigeria. We'll bring knowledge right to farmer where it is needed, most to improve quality of broiler chicken increase the yield and revenue to small scale broiler farmers across Nigeria. What are the broiler, what are the business opportunities that BIM offers you? Poultry farming is arguably the most viable livestock farming enterprise in the country, like I said earlier. There are a number of reasons for it, for this impressive profit disposition too. The demand of broiler chicken products is also very high and, and it is unfortunate that we don't have enough farmers to produce enough chicken. And more interests are coming up. Go to the axis of the city of Abuja. Someone wants to buy now. Someone is out there. Have, have enough farmers to sustain the buyers. And that is why we have decided that we are going to develop in such a way that anybody of B is able to simulate without as without any problem, without challenges, produce boilers and have profit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So, uh, so, uh, uh, the uh, the in production, on the production, because they do not have someone to hold their hands and they 
the, or the consultant or someone that will show them the why behind the what and the how of poetry. And that is what we have brought to you. We want to show you the why behind the what and the how. We are productorizing, liberalizing, and offering this BIM tool as a game changer to Nigerian poultry farmers, investors, and to you. The business opportunity is still help us. You. We have produced over 1 million best, and we can do it for you too. Let's hold your hands as you convert chicken to cash in five weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm sure you might have some questions. We will probably have some time to, to, to rest. And then in the next five minutes, we can, we can begin to have our questions thrown and then we can run on the, the train. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Oyele. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yes, you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, I have uh, two comments. One comment and a question. The first comment is... Uh, Everybody on this platform, uh, I want to believe we are professionals, right? So some ethics, please. There was too much interference during the, the, the talk. And I'm sure a lot of us miss very essential parts of the talk. Please, you come on the platform, you mute, except you're saying something. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bayo, uh, you mentioned the five areas of uh, um, interference in production. How does your, your app, how does it address the marketing risk in production? Do you have a solution to that? Are you able to aggregate? Are you able to, uh, um, to project where and where producers may market? Thank you. Yes, we, in the last four years, we've been able to work with a lot of off takers in the country. And um, precisely, especially in the Southwest, no matter where you are producing your chicken from, there are some hubs where it is easier to sell your chicken irrespective of the volume that you have. And that brings us to the issue of um, your market risk. Um, one of the features of, um, or the advantages, or the side benefits of bean is that when you sign on bean, we off take your beds, provided you are within a particular area of jurisdiction. But I can tell you if you are within Southwest, you are in, you are in Akwahibom or very close to Akwahibom or you are in Kaduna, very close to Kaduna. It's easy for us to take your beds in those areas of Nigeria. Because we also need to consider the transport between your farm and the optic point. But I can tell you one of the assets, one of the benefits of being is that we have a way of linking you to off-takers who are going to pay you within a specific, a specific timeline. Thank you. Have I been able to answer your question, sir? Yes, you have. Uh, you may just round it up by providing a map of your um, areas of operation and where the off-take capacities are already existing and where you project to expand to in the short term. Thank you. OK, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Dr. Adebay, are you answering that? Or should I answer that? 
Yeah, I just I just did, but if you have um, if you have more comments, yeah, yeah. You can okay. Have. From from what he said now, he wants to know what what is currently on ground and what we are planning to do in the nearest future, especially when it comes to uh, optic capacity. I, I I think I'm saying your mind, uh, Mr. Suleiman. Yes, you're correct. Yes, we can uptake beds uh, anywhere in Southwest. That's number one. Number two, we can uptake your beds at locations that are very close to Aqua Ibom. To Uyo, if you are very close to Uyo, in a distance of two hour drive to Uyo, we can uptake your beds there too. And um, we can also uptake beds in Kaduna. If you are not too far, two hours from uh, our, our offtake point in Kaduna, so these are the three major places that um, if you are not, if you are just about two hours drive from this point, it's quite um, economical, profitable to offtake your beds. Okay, so somebody said uh, Portacot does Portacot falls within your offtake area. So from that answer, since Portacot is just about two hours away uh, from Huyo, so I think. Uh, that should be within the jurisdiction. So I think it depends on where exactly within Portacourt. So if it is all this uh, place uh, that is towards Bayelsa, it may be far away. Uh, but if it's still within the uh, the core Portacourt or towards Uyo um, uh, itself, I think the, the the farm that are within that uh, place uh, would be okay. So somebody asked Abia. So I think it also depends on where exactly in Abia. Abia is also close to Uyo. So, so I think it depends on, uh, the, like he said, just let's look at the two hours uh, that he has uh, spoken about so that we can give another person opportunity to uh, ask his question. So Abia is close, uh, Portacot is close, so, but two hours is the range, uh, like he has uh, earlier said. Um, Mr. Tawi, you can go ahead with your question, please. Mr. Tawid, you have the floor. You have to unmute your microphone. Uh, if you... Hello. Good afternoon. Right. Good afternoon. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I hope the your app and the services will actually be uh, accessible and will be easy for the farmers to actually afford. I mean, affordability to the small scale farmer. I'm a broiler farmer in Kano, and uh, we have heard a lot about uh, this uh, off the uh, program. But uh, the major problem we usually have with them is that uh, when they are taking the baits, you know, they usually carry the bait as live baits to the point of a uh, calling. And uh, any problem on the way, it is the farmer that usually bear the growth of if there will be any mortality. So take Kano, for example, now to Kaduna, not too far. Have you ever done any of taking from Kano? That is my first question. Then the two, the second question is that uh, do you intervene between the off taker and the farmer, or is it the farmer that would negotiate with the off taker? And uh, what are the criteria for any of the car, for, for your of the cars in short, and uh, how do you pay the farmers? And how can one assess your application? So many questions at the same time. Okay, Dr. Libayo, over to you. Um, I, Mr. Tauhid, Tau 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 thank you so much for that question. Number one, um, yes. the, the models of Randy of broiler business is changing. Going at those days that you have to weigh your bed on the plant or in the premises of the processor or the off-taker. What you should do is that your beds must be weighed on your farm, record taken and documented before the off-taker takes away your bed. So your weighing should be done the responsibility of the off-taker starts the moment he steps out from your farm, from your farm gates down to his processing plant. So that, that is the model we run. Beds are weighed on the farm. The, 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 the average weight is taken on the farm. And this is going to be the premise upon which you will be paid. 
for the work you've just done. So that's number one. Number two is this. Um, we've not, we've not, I've not personally up, um, did, done any of taking in Kano before, but if Kano is within two hours drive to Kaduna, I think it's, uh, it's, it's not going to be a bad thing. And the, to your last question that do we, do we expose the farmers to, to the off-taker? would say no, because it is part of the, it's part of the, uh, 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 promise and your commitment that we are going to help you uptake your beds at some sort of extent. So to an extent, we will make sure your beds are, are taken at the right jurisdiction. Thank you. So let me just Am ask, do you need to connect with the off-taker since we are the off-taker, as in the, the, the off-taker is here. So uh, the person that will eventually process it is not going to, shouldn't be your headache because your board has already been cleared and your payment has been made. Well, let's go to iPhone. I don't know the name of the person that bears iPhone. So please, iPhone, you can go ahead. Okay, I don't know if I'm the one. I just want yeah, to make some comment. Okay. <laughs> there, are quest there are questions on the chat. So I don't know if you could yes, read those we, questions. We, we, we will do that. We will do that. Okay. And if we cannot do that now, we will find a way of answering the question and send it to everybody. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Wakto, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name very well. Ola Shemi, Ola Shupo. Yes, Ola yes, I'm here. All right. Okay, okay good, um, good, um, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, nice. Good afternoon, sir. Nice presentation. Okay, but then my concern is this. You not actually tell us how beam tech is working or giving us you, you you're supposed to give us a demonstration on it if it's even something going to be offline it's very good but um we can't somebody like me i cannot um, appreciate the beam technology so if, if there is a way you can give us a demonstration on how the how the data is going to the interface okay how the data is going to come in then the output Okay, what are the parameters? You give us week by week, then we'll be able to appreciate the brain tech better, I think so. Okay, Dr. Alashipa. So I, I wish you can. Um, okay, um, uh, we, this is the first series of the training, of the, of the training on BIM and the tech. We, by next week, that's 14th, um, some of our team members who is in charge of operations and also the person in charge of who sits on beam as his, as his own key performance, um, as his own key performance uh, duty is still going to come on board and is going to do those demonstrations. I'm just like the forerunner to tell us what our appetite about what beam does and how it works and the advantages of beam. But we promise you by next week, um, this time next week, 14th of, uh, of May, um, a member of our team, which is the operations, our head of operations, and also our head of um, business intelligence and strategy will come on, on board to, to do some of these demonstrations for us. But I can tell you it's, it's something that is worthwhile. Okay, I hope so, because um, you know, let, let, let me just, let me just, because I'm also, I'm involved with, I'm involved in this planning. Uh, so, uh, 14th, uh, we will have people that, that is what they do, speaking directly to you. You know, he's the CEO, so he has people that are working under him, that that is exactly what they do, and they will be presenting next week. So, by that next week, uh, we will be able to have the detail. So like you said, it's just a foreigner and he's just giving us a, let me say, general overview of uh, how it works. But those people that carries out the, those people that carry out the operation and also the technology will be speaking directly live to us. And you can ask as many questions as you want to have and they can easily provide the uh, information to you. I hope that satisfies you. Okay, we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait All right. 
Thank you very much for your patience. You. Okay, so uh, from uh, my friend from um, Ethiopia, over to you. You can ask your question. Yes, uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you again. Uh, my question is that here uh, you are uh, doing on the uh, most of the, on the boilers, broilers. What about why they are not working on the layers? Yes, I wanted to okay. know. Is it, for, is it also work for layers or are they going to do for that one on another time? I want to know about that. Thank you. Okay, so doctor, why are we not talking about layers? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure he's on this call again. Um, sorry about that. Okay, well, Probably it was going to reconnect, or maybe it reconnects or it doesn't reconnect. Uh, I, I can give, based on my interview with him, I can give a little answer to that, but my answer may not be perfect. So they've been working on broiler production for the past four years, uh, just because they have been using this device internally. But now that they are bringing it out, they also want to start working on layers, but they don't want to bring out something that they have not proven. That is the reason why he has not talked about layer this far. So, uh, well, he may have some other reasons why it is only broilers, but I know that for the past four years, they have been working on broilers and they have success story on broiler, and that's why they want to also give it out to other farmers. Uh, they have not worked on layers, although there is a template for layers, but they have not used the template. So they just want to use the template uh, to prove it, uh, if it works exactly like that of uh, broilers before uh, 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 pushing it out for farmers to use. Uh, does that answer your question satisfactorily? Yes, of course, indeed. thank you. All right. So are there any other questions? We are running out of time. Um, there are some other questions here, but he is not even around, but like I said, I'm going to make him attend to all the questions so that we can broadcast the answer to all of these questions, uh, probably on our social media platform or through the WhatsApp group, uh, if you are already in WhatsApp or Telegram group. So if you are in Telegram or WhatsApp group, we will broadcast it when it provides answers because I'm not sure it's here and um, I don't want to be answering what I'm not so sure of. Uh, I, I don't want, I don't know if he's going to join us again or not. If he joins us again, then we may be able to have answer to all of those questions, but if not, uh, probably we may have to just round up now. So if you have any other question before we close, let me know. But if there are no questions, uh, let me just uh, quickly inform us because uh, we just spoke about it. Uh, please try to mute your microphone. So we just spoke about it. Uh, I want to just quickly present this to us so that uh, we can be informed uh, about it because uh, we, somebody has a question and uh, I think uh, this is an answer to the question that the person asked. So let me just quickly show, show that to us. Um, sorry. Uh, please try to move your microphone. Uh, we will soon run off. Okay, so this is uh, for next week, as you can see, 14th. Um, okay, Dr. Adebayo is trying to connect again, so he may be able to answer some of the questions. So we have application of new technology in poultry production, the operations, and informatics. So like I told you, this is coming next week, and uh, the people that are in charge are those two people that you are seeing there, and they are going to be able to give us detailed information about the operations, uh, how it actually works on the field, and then the informatics, how the tech. That would be answered. So if you have any question, please type it in the uh, chat box. Uh, 
uh, so that uh, you can provide answer to that. And like I said, we are going to be able to get it either on the, the WhatsApp group or on our social media platform. Uh, since uh, I'm not sure his network is that good and we've been having challenges being on and off. So, um, so please, if you have any questions from the presentation or uh, about the uh, technology, uh, you can let uh, me know. Although by next week, like I said, we are still going to be having deeper, uh, we'll be going deeper into the operations and the, uh, the technology itself so that we can have a better understanding. And uh, if there are no questions, uh, I think I will want to appreciate in absentia, Dr. Adebayo Awoyele uh, for so, the time sorry. and the presentation. Okay, somebody wants to ask a question, yeah? Yeah, sorry, uh, I'm very much interested to, uh, to attend this uh training that's upcoming so okay. where will where, where i will be getting this information or the it link will go the out link. today don't worry how you are going to get the link everything will go out today so i'm just giving you a preview so you will get it uh, are you on uh, any of our social media platform if you are not on our social media platform you may miss it but if you are there or you are on our telegram or whatsapp group you are also going to be able to have access to this uh, so just follow our social media platform. You are going to get the information, the detailed information about this, this very day, today, so that you can subscribe, I mean, you can register to participate. Have I yeah. answered your question? Yeah, what I will be writing on, on social media so as to get this. Edmex, E-V-M-E-G-S. E Sorry, -E E. -V the, okay, let me type it in the chat box so that you can just copy it from there. Okay, thank you. So you can copy it. So I just typed it on the type on the chat box. So you can check WhatsApp. I mean, you can check um, Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn to be able to have access to this. So if you type FMX, it will show up and then you can get the information from there. All right, so, um, so please, and if you are also on our social media plan, I mean, if you're on our Telegram and WhatsApp group, it's automatic. You are going to have access to all the training and all the information because that is the first contact. And then our social media platform also, you have access to the information. And uh, like I said, if you still have more questions, please type it in the chat box. I'm just trying to wait patiently for anybody that have questions. Uh, you can type it on the... Uh, you can type it on the chat box so that I will be able to take your questions to him and then he provide answer to them. I'll put it on the WhatsApp group and also on our social media platform so that you can have access to it. So to, next week, like I said, uh, this training will be coming up. It will be hosted by NSAP for Veterinary, Med, uh, Veterinary Services. So uh, it's not every this time around. So it's NSAP that will be hosting it. And the two, uh, let me say, pillar of uh, the company will be relating directly on how they have been able to achieve this success uh, for the past four years and all the necessary information and questions that you have on how it works. Because uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned it, what you are going to be having is not just going to be numbers, it's going to be like uh, infographics. So you can get a picture of, your, of the performance of your farm as it is, uh, and that's in good time. So even if there is problem, you can easily intervene and that's in good time too. So thank you everybody for coming around. Thank you, Dr. Debayo Awoyele for the wonderful presentation do in absentia. And uh, thank you everybody. We're going to see you next week by God's grace. Uh, I'm going to stay on hold for about uh, one minute for people that still have questions to drop it on the chat box. But from all of us, EVMEX, uh, EMSA, Veterinary Medical Diagnosis Service, EVMEX, we want to say thank you and we want to say bye for now. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, you. Bye bye. bye.